Good morning. It's very early. It's still dark. And I just woke up. And um, I've been wanting to do this video for a little while. And I thought I'll just get up and do it before I do anything else. Uh, and it's meeting magic. And the reason it's taken me so long to do this is because I had a meeting, <laughs> a gathering, a training last Saturday. And it's kind of wiped me out a little bit. <laughs> but the reason I wanted to share this is because it was magic and it was so great and it really went brilliantly and it reminded me of how important it is that when we connect and we get together and it's kind of silly me saying that because I do Zumba Gold online on Zoom every Monday morning so I know what it's like I come together we interact we all talk it's live uh, we're on Zoom but we're we're essentially all in the room together so and it's wonderful because we have people from all over the place. Anyway, so when I was doing this training, I thought I wasn't sure if I was going to do uh, a Zoom option. I thought maybe I'd just do it all live. And then uh, I remembered a friend of mine had been had working with somebody who was deaf. And working through Zoom, uh, she was able to use the subtitles. So, so this person was able to have that accessibility, you know, the option of having subtitles. So I thought, you know what, that's great. That I had another option for people. So I thought, I'll do the Zoom. And then actually most of the people came on Zoom. And it was it was quite a small group. And what was great is we were able to have that interactivity. So when I was going off to have a tea break or a bathroom break, I would come back and I could hear people talking to each other or people in the room talking to people online. And it's that connection and that connectivity and I was really impressed because I was thinking, you know, we have to get together in a room to do this. And I think no, nothing replaces that. Nothing replaces being in a room with somebody with the energy, being able to hug somebody. Um, it's, it's not the same. But there's a magic in both. There's a magic in being able to be together, even though we're spread out across the world uh, in different time zones. <laughs> And there's a magic about being able to be physically together. And maybe maybe the thing is really more important than whether we're physically together or whether we're on Zoom together. It's, it's the energy, you know, the energy of our gathering, of our meeting, of our training. And I'm sure you've experienced it as well. Sometimes you go to a live event and um, it's all about selling and everybody's trying to sell you something. And... The energy doesn't feel great. Or, um, yeah, just all kinds of reasons why the energy might not be great. Also, you know, sometimes you've got other physical things going on, you know, like the heat or the cold or something like that. And sometimes the digital, sometimes the Zoom's not great because the sound's a bit bad or, or you've got technical problems and things like that. But I guess that's just like life, isn't it? There's lots of things that can go wrong and can go right. But one of the things we've learned you know, I know people who do like healing and stuff um, and they do it virtually so they can send the energy. It's pretty amazing. But this is about the magic of meeting. And it's funny, uh, I started setting up the training on Eventbrite and I, I'm setting up events on Eventbrite. In fact, next Sunday I'm doing a live event in London. And then they did this reconvene, reconvene summit. And so they had different people coming and speaking. It's really good. And actually the, the talks are still on YouTube. Uh, and they had somebody who was the, the US Surgeon General and somebody else, sorry, an author, talking about getting together and meeting. And one of the things they said is that you really don't need a good reason. <laughs> you can come together and have a meeting for anything. And... I think we, we knew that, we used to do that before the pandemic, you know, we would just, I remember like somebody would just come in and sit down for coffee and then we'd just start chatting and it, you know, or somebody would pop in for something and it would seem relaxed and normal. And I think we're a little bit out of practice and things can feel a bit clunky and it takes us a while to get back or go forward to, to whatever our new normal is going to be. And... I think that sometimes it's just recognising that we are just a bit clunky. <laughs> and I did this the other day, I was, I was inviting somebody to, to this thing next week. 
And I was saying it and it all came out like, blah, 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 blah. And I was like, wow, I, I sound like, I sound like a character in like a romantic comedy. You know, when they're trying to ask someone on a date and it's like, oh, um, would you, um, maybe the thing and the thing. And, you know, like, oh, okay, I'm, you know, I can sit down and write it in an invite on the newsletter. I can sit down and write an invite on Eventbrite because it's all I've been doing for the last three years is doing everything online. <laughs> but when it comes to standing in front of a boy, standing in front of a girl or a girl standing, no, you know what I mean. Uh, you just kind of go, blah, 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 and and it's like, okay. And I love it when we recognize that we're not good at something. Like I went to bed last night and I was stressing about something and I woke up this morning and I was like, okay. So what I need to do is ask for help. What I need to do is say yes to help. And I sat there for about like a few minutes thinking like, okay, how can I let help into my life? How can I allow help in? And I was like, oh yeah, I could do that thing. I could, I could do that thing that I did before when I asked these people. I was like, oh, okay. All right. And so sometimes that discomfort is like, we realize there's something we need to do. We, something, someone we need to ask, something we need to do. So we recognize that discomfort and we go, you know what? I need to practice. <laughs> I need to practice getting together with people. I need to practice inviting people. Hey, do you want to go and get a cup of coffee? Hey. And I think one of the hardest things, I think, over the last couple of years, um, it's so funny, I wrote about this, and then I'm, as I'm reading it, I'm kind of going, yeah, yeah. We've had to say no so many times. We've had to say no to doing things and no to ourselves. And, you know, when we think, hey, I want to go to the pub or, you know, go out for lunch. And, and we've turned people down so much, or they've turned us down so much, that we feel like we can't try anymore. Mm. I'm feeling that definitely about some people in my life that I've stopped making the effort and trying. Um, and it's hard because sometimes it takes energy, you know, you have to have the energy to do it, you know. Uh, but I think the thing is, if you, if you focus on something, that meeting magic, that wanting to be together magic, what you do is you focus on it and you make it kind of like your top priority. Like me doing this video, look. Um, I actually did a video on my practical trainings like this as well. And I said, you know, the thing is sometimes we just kind of wait for times to be perfect. We wait everything to be perfect. And you're like, just do it. Wake up in the morning and do it. So if there's somebody you want to invite somewhere or you want to organize something, you want to do something, you want to say yes to something, you wait until the moment you've got just enough energy to do it and you do it, you do it. Well, as soon as you've got the energy, because if you don't, it's a bit like, you know, you get up in the morning and you go, oh, I could do that. All right, let me do 17 other things that are important. And by the time you've done that, you don't have the energy anymore. So one of the weird things I discovered after a while is, um, I used to do this thing when I was writing and I would wake up, go downstairs, get a cup of tea, go back to bed and I would just sit in my bed and I would just write. And that would often happen from like six in the morning till about 10 in the morning. So I would actually write for about four hours on a cup of tea and a biscuit. And then I'd get up and have breakfast and, and I'd always think, oh, I'm on such a roll. I'll come back and do some more later. I'll write some more later. And it never really happened. It was those get up and just start writing. And I thought it was really strange and really weird uh, until I went to a writer's conference and there's somebody on stage who was a very famous writer talking about her process. And she said, well, I just wake up in the morning <laughs> and I just start writing. And then I get out of bed. And that's the thing sometimes, that, you know, if you want to do something really important, get up and do it before you get out of bed, before you brush your teeth, before you get dressed, um, before you brush your hair <laughs> and you just do it you just do it because you've got the energy in the morning and sometimes you just use up the energy that's fine but other times because you've done that important thing that thing you were holding yourself back from the thing that was so difficult you get more energy so it sets you up for the day and uh, there is a lovely feeling when you've written for four or five hours, when you go for a lovely walk along the beach. 
after you've already done that much work, which for a lot of people would be like a week's work of writing. So that's pretty special. That's all I have to say really about that. But, you know, if you're feeling dodgy about meeting people, getting together, gathering, take your time, take it at your own pace, but use that energy. And just remember, sometimes you've got to practice at things before it gets normal and you feel comfortable again and not like a character in a really awkward, awkward romantic comedy. Okay. Love you. Take care. Bye.